Oh, praise the Lord. Take your Bible, turn with me to the book of Luke chapter number one. Uh, Luke chapter number one. Luke, the beloved physician used by God to write the gospel of Luke, telling us about the life of Christ. You remember a couple weeks ago, we looked at the prayer of Zacharias and Elizabeth and uh, their prayer didn't seem to be answered, but it was. God heard their prayer and, uh, but he answered in his own time and in his own way. Then last week, if you remember, we looked at the angel coming to Mary and saying, Mary, you're going to have a baby. And uh, Mary looks, how, how can this be? I know not a man. And he said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. It's a reminder for all of us that God's will is not sometimes possible, but God's will is always possible possible, always possible. We're going to look at a unique portion of scripture about John the Baptist. And as you, you know, you read through here, Elizabeth finally has a child. She brings forth a son and uh, they want to call him Zacharias, but they said, no, we're going to call him John. And they get a little confused about that. And remember John the Baptist, uh, John the Baptist's dad, Zacharias couldn't speak and uh, at that period of time, they opened up his mouth. And he said, his name's going to be John. And uh, praise the Lord. As you read this, he then prophesies. And he begins to talk about John the Baptist, his life. And as you get there, you're go you'll get to the last verse. And it'll mention about John the Baptist growing and waxing strong in spirit. Now, we're going to read that verse in a moment. This message is entitled this morning, uh, Raising Strong Children. Raising Strong Children. I recently was in a family's home and uh, there was a young girl there that was not part of that family and she began to just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And then as she was talking, she began to talk about her moving, her family moving. She seemed to be without a mom or a dad or sometimes a mom and uh, going and living in uh, a house where there was a uh, drunkenness problem and just, it, just, it just broke my heart. And here this little girl, boy, 11 years of age, boy, God loves her and cares for her, so much potential to live for God, but is in a difficult situation, and it seems like a difficult situation a lot because of her parents. There's a verse in the book of Hosea, I'm going to read it to you, it says this, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, for my people are destroyed for Lack of knowledge. You ever heard that before? And then as you read it on, it continues. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Then it says, I will also forget thy children. I will also, for and I, I never really noticed that before. But as you read that, because of the parents rejecting the word of God, rejecting the word of God and the instruction of God, it says basically there's a consequence to your children. You led them in a certain direction, now the children that you have are gonna struggle with their relationship with God. And here we're gonna find John the Baptist, he was a little bit different. His parents guided him and directed him and uh, pointed in the right direction. It's interesting, let's just stand for the reading of God's word. We're gonna start here, Luke chapter number one, verse number 80. And uh, we'll read this all together in unison. Luke chapter one, verse number 80. Are you ready? The child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Now you notice that the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. Go over to Luke chapter two. We're gonna read verse number 40. This now in verse number 40 of chapter two is gonna speak of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, wow, look at this, verse 40. Ready, read this with me. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Very similar, chapter one is talking about John the Baptist. Here in chapter two is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 52, chapter two, verse 52 with me. Let's read that together. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And oh, the story of John the Baptist, the story of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Uh, they were both growing and they both waxed strong in spirit. It's going to be a good, good, important uh, sermon this morning. Before we go any further, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. And thank you for this gathering of your people here this morning. And uh, without a doubt, we uh, have so many different life situations. We have grandmas and grandpas here. We have teenagers here this morning. We have young parents here this morning. We have middle-aged folks here this morning. But God, I pray that you help us to realize the message is not for some, it's for all. In some ways, if we have children, we can apply this to how we raise our children. In some ways, Lord, I believe that some of the truths of training our children to in a certain direction, we can look at our lives and say, maybe I need to grow in that area. But Lord, I pray that everything we do gives you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I have 12 children. That's a lot of children. Four of them are married. And uh, I desperately want my children to live for the Lord. Third John, verse number four says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. There's no greater joy than knowing that your children are living for the Lord. Oh well, boy, I don't, I don't know if there's a bigger heartache seeing your child not serve God but go a different direction. And as we go through this, raising children for the Lord, raising strong children, now I'm going to make a statement here. God, now this says, God favors or likes certain people over others. Okay, that's a hard statement. God favors, and, and really what I'm saying, God favors or likes certain people more than others. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, we think about Noah and Abraham, Ruth, David, Job, Samuel, David, Daniel found special favor with God. What I mean by that, God treated these folks in a favorable way. God had a close relationship with some of these individuals. For example, Abraham was called the friend of God. He had a close relationship with God. He had the blessings of God on his life. Boy, that's what I want for my children. That's what I want for my life. Uh, we think of another one. John was the disciple whom the Lord loved. He had a certain unique relationship that was close to the Lord. I want my children to have favor with God. I want my children to be blessed by the King of kings and Lord of lords. By the way, me as an individual, I want to have favor with God. I would like to have God's blessing on my life. We go through this, go back with me to chapter number one, verse number 80, and you'll notice this. This is sort of going to be an outline of how we can raise strong children that have favor with God. And uh, we look at verse number 80 and it says, and the child grew, and the child what? Grew, grew and waxed strong in spirit. Chapter uh, number two, verse 40, it says, and the child grew. And then verse 52, it says this, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. And really, part of raising strong children, I want to start with this thought. Uh, it's important to raise physically strong children. Now, we'll get to the spiritual side in a, in a moment, but I, I really think there's an importance here of raising physically strong boys and girls. Boy, John the Baptist, for example, he was a man's man. He was strong. There's a, an interesting story as you read uh, Matthew chapter number 11. Jesus is speaking of, of John the Baptist, and he says this. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, concerning John the Baptist, What went you out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went you out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. You know, John the Baptist was not some weak man. He was a strong man. And he was making a reference. What did you go out to see a, a weak person who couldn't stand up and get anything done? John the Baptist was a strong man. By the way, the Lord Jesus Christ, son of a carpenter. We see him turning the tables over in the temple. We see the Lord Jesus Christ, a strong, physically strong man. And we live in a, in a world today where a lot of the, the children are being raised very soft. What do I mean physically? They, they don't live in the world that we live in, you know, the real world. They live in this metaverse, virtual world. 
and they live in the world of video games sometimes, uh, sometimes in the internet, and not all, all of that is bad, but often they're not raised to be physically strong. They're soft. And by the way, your physical does affect your spiritual. And I believe that with all my heart. Your physical does affect your spiritual. Think about the Bible times. In Bible times, boy, the, the communities, they had farming communities sometimes. And boy, they had families that worked together. And the kids at a young age would go out with dad, work in the field. And boy, they were physically using their, their, their muscles. And I, I really believe uh, with all of my heart, we uh, would like to raise strong children. We ought to raise our children to be physically strong and able to do things. For an example, uh, my son Daniel right there, we, we went to the store the other day, and uh, boy, they had a sale on pineapples, $1.34, I think, for a pineapple, and so I got four pineapples, and we got some other things. We got home, and my son Daniel comes to help me out, and I started packing the bags on him. Hold out your hands, and he's got this. I put a pineapple here, and then I put another pineapple here, and I put another pineapple, and he was like this, like leaning back, and I says, you got it, Dan. He said with a smile on his face, I got it, Dad. And he walked out there with his chest out right there, walked in there. He physically could carry a load. He physically could get some things done. Uh, my son Joshua, I, I was uh, giving him some, some, some instructions the other day. We had this big window unit in our front room right there, and it's getting to be winter time. So I, I was getting ready to, to leave, and I said, Joshua, I want you to get that window unit out there and put it up in the, in the garage where it goes. And I was looking, and I was thinking, man, that's huge. And then I began to think, man, I may have asked too much of him. But he just looked at me, and he sort of stuck out his chest. He said, Dad, I got it. And, and physically, he has been trained to carry a load. Physically, he's trained to carry a burden. And by the way, we need our children to grow up to carry a load, carry a burden. By the way, you get a little older. It, it, it's a lot of work raising children. It's a lot of work having children. It's a lot of work uh, bringing home uh, the groceries, you might say. And your physicality, being able to carry a load, actually work. By the way, uh, the Bible talks about by the sweat of our brow. Uh, we ought to be able to uh, work, as, especially as men we talk about. Boy, carrying a load, carrying a load. I remember my son Jonathan at a young age. We were, I believe we were, we had little runners for a driveway. And I, I was, uh, got these bags of concrete. And uh, I said to my son Jonathan, I think he was eight or nine years of age. He said, I want you to move this bag of concrete over there. He said, dude, I can't do it. And he'd get down there and he'd go, ooh. And I said, boy, move it. And he said, I can't do it. I said, well, I'll give you a dollar if you do it in the next 10 seconds. Boom, boom. And he ran across there like that. And he got it over there right there. But I was trying to teach my son Jonathan the importance of carrying a load. Often we can do more physically than we think we can. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's not just for boys, it's for girls. My daughter, Andrea, right there, uh, a mother of four, one more on the way. She is a tough girl. Boy, she can carry a load. And life for a young mom that has four children under four years of age with one on the way is not easy. But boy, she is tough. And physically, she has been uh, able to work hard for her whole life. And boy, she can carry a load. And it helps you spiritually. My son Levi, he just doesn't quit. My son Benjamin is a hard worker. And uh, look at all of my children. I try to teach them to carry a load. By the way, I, I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to take time as a dad to teach my children to carry a load. I bought a house in the neighborhood here probably five years ago, six years ago, and it was a beat up house a little bit, and it needed some work done. So it was the middle of winter, and I never turned the electricity on. And uh, I had my kids go over there, and we, we, had, we repaired. Do you remember that, Levi? And, well, you probably don't. You were young at that time. But, boy, we were out there working on that thing, freezing to death, crawling under there and uh, things. And, and it was hard, but physically it was good to carry that load physically. And I, I want to encourage you moms and dads, boy, it's okay for your child to work. It's okay for your child to carry a load. It's okay for them to labor it's okay, it's actually good for them because the physical will help the spiritual. John the Baptist, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
they were able and they were uh, physically capable. Now go back with me. If you look at this, verse number 80, this is the second point. This was a long sermon if I never get an amen. amen. <laughs> oh boy, there we go. That, that, now you wanted a shorter sermon. I got it now. Uh, you need a longer sermon this morning. And, uh, verse number 80, and the child grew, speaking of John the Baptist, and then it says an interesting little phrase right here, and waxed strong in spirit. And waxed what? Strong in spirit. Then chapter 2, verse number 40, it says, and the child grew, this is Jesus, and waxed strong in spirit. Now, strong in spirit, what is that, that talking about? And uh, this is interesting, wax strong in spirit, you really want to think of this. I want to create a, or train my children to be strong, strong children, strong physically, but not governed by their emotions. Strong in spirit. And this is a very, very, very important truth. A spiritually strong children not run or controlled by their emotions. Well, I'll get out of bed, but I just feel tired. No, get out of bed. You're not governed by your emotions, you're governed by principles. Well, I just got tired today and I, I just didn't feel like, well, it doesn't matter always how you feel, it matters what's right is. Uh, well, you know, everybody was doing, no, it doesn't matter if everybody's doing it, we're not governed by what everybody's doing, we're going to be strong in spirit, we're not going to be controlled by our emotions or so, controlled by society, we're going to be controlled by what truth is and what right is, hey, spiritually strong children. The story of John the Baptist and Jesus, through times they weren't governed by their emotions, sure they had emotions, but they weren't run by their emotions. John the Baptist got up and boy, he began to preach and there were people that didn't like what he said, but it didn't matter. He preached the word of God, thus saith the Lord. So much so that one of the rulers, he preached against the, the sin of adultery that he committed and they put him in prison. But it didn't matter. John the Baptist was in the will of the Lord. He wasn't governed by his emotions. He was governed by being strong in spirit. He controlled, by the way, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls, the Bible says. If, you're, if you can't have uh, control or rule or be strong in spirit, boy, you're like a city that is defenseless. And I'll get more into this in a moment. Uh, David, King David, was about to die. His son Solomon was becoming king. And David, right before he died, looked at Solomon and said these words, said, to, to Solomon, be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Hey, Solomon, be thou there first strong and show thyself a man. In other words, he's saying, Solomon, you don't understand. You're gonna become king. There's a lot of pressure on you as a king. There's a lot of decisions that you need to make. And you're gonna to have to be strong, not governed by your emotions. You're not gonna be governed by your feelings. You're gonna be governed by truth. You're gonna be governed by what's right. You're gonna be governed by principles. You're going to be governed by the word of God. Be strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Amen. By the way, we desire to have our children have a strong human spirit so they don't wilt under the responsibilities and challenges of life. Life is difficult. Boy, in life, there's pressure. In life, there is peer pressure. Life, there is uh, pressures of the world. There's pressures of, of just living right there. And if they're not strong in spirit, they're going to wilt under that pressure and they're going to be shackled with the problems that are caused by that. But by the way, to this morning, maybe you don't have children, but maybe you could look inwardly. Are you governed by your emotions? Are you controlled by your feelings rather than the principles of God's word? And by the way, if that's the truth, boy, become a child again and begin to work on your own life and your own growth and don't be run by your emotions. Paul, by the way, Paul in, in the Bible, he didn't, he didn't wilt under the pressures. Boy, he, he was able to be beaten and he was be able to be thrown into jail. And boy, in the middle of that jail, he was able to sing praises to the Almighty God. Why? He wasn't controlled by his emotions. He was controlled with being strong in spirit. Boy, John the Baptist, same. You remember, you remember Peter? Remember Peter? Oh, I'm the man. 
Remember that? John, he said that. He didn't say it quite like that, Brother Pete. Uh, but he, he said to Jesus, he said, wherever you go, Jesus, I will follow. And Jesus says, no, you're going to deny me. No, not me. I'm willing to die for you. And, uh, but he had struggles. Boy, you remember that? He, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. They came out there and uh, betrayed with a kiss. And Peter followed a far off. He warmed himself on the fire. Hey, were you with him? Uh, and remember, under that, he began to wilt. I, I, I don't know him. And he denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times. At the end of that, because he didn't, wasn't strong in spirit in that case, by the way, we've all been there, understood. But in that period of case, he was filling his life with regret. He wept bitterly. When you're making emotional decisions, not spiritual decisions, when you're led by your emotions and feelings rather than being governed by the Bible, you make bad decisions that make you weep, that you regret. And over and over again, a lot of the pain we have in our life is not because uh, we don't have the truth, it's because we've wilted under the pressure. We were not strong in spirit. We need men, we need women that are strong in spirit, strong in spirit. Now, my son Jonathan, I remember, and uh, we lived in Virginia Beach, a house on Acre, in Acredale, and we had a, a, a tree swing. And you'd, you'd climb up into the tree house, a rope right here, and you'd have to step out and you step out, whoop, and you'd fly out there and you'd miss that tree by about that much. Brother Mike, I remember you got scared on there one time, about died. And, uh, but anyways, I got home and my son Jonathan is so excited. Dad, watch me. And I said, watch you watch. Watch me jump off the rope swing and I land on my feet. So I went out, okay, son. We got out there, whoop, and then he let go. And then all of a sudden he turns sideways and all of a sudden he's like this. And then he puts his hands down like this and he catches the ground and his arm looked like this. It's broken. And he looked at it, he's like. Ah! I mean, it was loud. It was bad. It was painful. And then I remember Mandy hearing the loud whatever scream somehow. And she began to come out. And I looked at my son. I said, son, control yourself. Don't scare your mom in a time. Like, Be tough. It's broken. You're going to be okay. Now, that was rough. I know it was rough. It was slightly dad-esque, you might say. <laughs> but I said, knock it off. You're not going to be controlled by that feeling, by emotion. You need to control it, even if it's difficult, even if it's bad. And that, that, that's an extreme example. But my son Jonathan today is strong in spirit. He's able to go through a tough, difficult time and not be ruled by his pain, by pain, by emotion. He's able to be strong in spirit, controlled by and governed by the word of God rather than by the emotional pain. Benjamin, I love you. I, I'm just going to say that I was not always nice to you. And uh, the time Benjamin was earning some money and uh, you'd mowed some lawns and you went to go. I said, go out and get some mistletoe. It's Christmas time. You can sell some mistletoe. And so he took out a machete to go into the uh, neighborhood park to get some mistletoe. And I think you stopped by somebody that owed you money from a lawn job, something like that. I, I may not understand. He knocked on the door with a machete. They didn't answer the door. They went to the park, and that's basically in their backyard, got in a tree with a machete, cut down some mistletoe. They called the police on you. And I remember they delivered you to our house, and he was handcuffed and crying. And I remember as a dad, I couldn't help but laugh. Laughed at him. You know what? My son has not been traumatized for his whole life because his dad left it, la laughed at him. And I'm going to say he's not told my dad laughed at me. Oh, no. And by the way, no, he's strong in spirit that he can realize that sometimes his dad's not just, sometimes his dad's not fair. And he can, he's okay with that. He's strong in spirit. He's, he's going to survive. Boy, my kids, uh, you, know, you know, pastor's kids, sometimes... Uh, in church, you have uh, problems in church where your kids get picked on. You understand that? But I've always told my kids, I said, hey, listen, we're not an entitlement. We live in an entitlement society, but kids, you're not entitled to anything. Listen, I, it doesn't matter if kids pick on you. It doesn't matter if people say bad things about you. None of that matters. That's life. And your, your, your confidence, your security is not if everybody loves you. None of that matters. You need to be strong in spirit. Your security comes from the almighty God your relationship with him, and knock it off. 
And I tell my, and that may seem harsh, but I'm teaching them that when they go out into the society, it's hard out there. In the real world, people are not going to treat you fair. And if every time somebody looks at you wrong, somebody says something to you wrong, oh, woe is me, and you, you all of a sudden get emotional about that and you're controlled by that, you're going to live a miserable life because life is not fair. The world is hard. But boy, you can train your children the opposite. Say, listen, it's okay. Sometimes the pastor of the church is not right, doesn't treat you right, but it's okay because he loves God. It's okay because you're going to get over it. Uh, it's okay. Do you understand? You, you, it's okay if he gets beat up in the, the church playground. It's going to be okay. I think my kid knocked out your kid or something like that, Brother Mike. And you know what didn't bother you a bit? You basically said, that's life. It's going to be okay. And then he knocked my, my kid the next week. <laughs> and I said the same thing. I said, get him back, boy. <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, but you understand, it's not, it's just, life is that way. We need our children to be strong in spirit, strong in spirit, strong in, boy, kids getting picked on. Knock it off. We're not going to act like that. Life is tough. You'd better straighten out. Amos had a rubber band the other day. He's, he's going, he's having the fun. He's smiling from ear to ear. One and a half. It's time for Bible prayers. I sit him right next to me. I say, give me that. And I took the rubber band from him. You know what he did? Then I said, I said to one of the other kids, go get the spanking stick. And then as soon as he saw that, he went from the, he went, I didn't even have to spank him. I didn't even have to touch him. I just had to give him that, you know. And by the way, you know, you're training him to be not controlled by a rubber band, whether he has a rubber band or not have a render band. He needs to be strong in spirit. You, you imagine Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Lot went there. And imagine his children growing up in Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> his, his children went to uh, Sodom Middle School. Then eventually they went to Gomorrah High. And think about at the end right there that Lot was told by that, that angel Lord to get out of here, we're going to destroy this. And he went to his sons-in-laws and they looked at him and said, what are you talking about? Where did you come from? And he had not trained his children to be strong in spirit. By the way, do you understand the consequences to that? The consequences? Boy, you, you, we could get in a discussion about homeschooling or Christian schooling or public schooling. None of that really matters in every, every instance, whether you're homeschooled or go to public school or go to Christian school, there's going to be problems. And the only answer right there is strong in spirit, strong in spirit, strong. You're not governed by your emotions. You're governed by the word of God. Luke chapter 2, verse 40 says this, and this is the third point. This is good, isn't it? And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. This is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says, filled with wisdom. Say that phrase with me. Filled with wisdom. Then verse 52 says this. And Jesus increased in wisdom. And Jesus increased in what? Wisdom. wisdom. So not only strong physically, but strong in the spirit. But we need to, to, to raise strong children to teach our children to have wisdom. Teach our children to have wisdom. Now, in life, there is facts. One plus one in the Nettesheim home equals three. Oh, we're not very good at the facts. No, one plus one is what? Two. That's a fact right there. And what? That's knowledge. That's facts right there. Wisdom is taking that knowledge, whatever knowledge you have, and using it in the fear of the Lord. Teaching whatever you've learned and applying it to the service of the Almighty God. And we have books on wisdom, the book of Proverbs, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. It says to know wisdom. And it's very important for us to, to lead our children to have wisdom. In 1 Kings chapter 3, uh, Solomon becomes king, and goes down to Gibeah. The Lord appears to him and says, ask what you will. What do you want, Solomon? And Solomon looked up and he said, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this uh, so great a people? And what he did is he said, Lord, I need wisdom. By the way, wisdom is the 
principal thing, therefore get wisdom, the Bible says. I want to say that again. Therefore, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And it's so important to, to lead our children, not just to have knowledge. By the way, a lot of schools will inundate a child with a lot of facts. Sometimes wrong, but a lot of facts. But they, they fail to give those children wisdom. And we as Christians know that they do need facts, but we need to lead them to take those facts and use them in the fear of the Lord. Lord, give me wisdom. John the Baptist and, and the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously Jesus is God in the flesh, was wise, made wise decisions. Boy, they would approach Jesus with a question and you see the wisdom that Jesus had. He makes a decision. Jesus, um, every decision, he's obviously God in the flesh. He was wise. And it's a leading us to, to lead our children to have wisdom. My children, ah, boy, I remember hearing about the need for wisdom and I, I knew about the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom. So many, many years ago, I started having my children make sure that they read a proverb a day. And it leads them through the book of Proverbs once a month. And then even recently, probably six or seven years ago, our children got this thing called picture proverbs, where you take the proverb of the day and it associates a picture and it gives the verses and it reads it to them. And they'll, they'll go through the proverb a day three, three times, sometimes uh, more. And you know, why would I, I spend time leading my children to learn the book of Proverbs? Because the book of Proverbs is the book of wisdom. My children need wisdom. They need wisdom. Life is rough. You, you, my, my children need wisdom. Who are they going to marry? They need wisdom. What, what job are they going to take? They need wisdom. Who, who are they going to be their friends? They need wisdom. Where are they going to go to church? They need wisdom. How to deal with their dad? They need wisdom. They need lots of wisdom. And we think about the importance, the vital importance for our children to have wisdom. Benjamin, you memorized a, a, a tremendous portion of the book of Proverbs. And even recently, within the last couple of months, you said it's your goal to, to have the whole book of Proverbs memorized. You know, does that make a dad happy? My, oh my, I'm happy. Why? Because I know my son desperately needs wisdom. We have the way we all need wisdom. You know, it's interesting. The book of Proverbs deals with some very sensitive subjects. You ever read Proverbs chapter 7? I'm going to read a portion of it. My son, keep my words. Then it says a little bit later, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. Then it says, for at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle in heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Then it goes on. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. And, uh, oh, you read that, and that's, that's like sensitive. You're like, when you realize what it's talking about, it's like serious, you know? But you, you realize, I almost in my brain, you first read that, you're going to hide that a little bit from your children a little bit because it's very serious right there. But then the next verse in there, chapter number 6, verse 24, it says this, Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and, you know, that proverb right there was written for a child to understand some things that they may not understand at 12 or 11 or 10, but it gets it in their brain to realize when they get to be about 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, there's some things right around the corner that can affect the rest of your life. And they desperately need wisdom, desperately need wisdom. We need to raise strong children, and I'll tell you what, they desperately need to be taught wisdom. Wisdom to marry right, wisdom to take the right job, wisdom to live for God, wisdom to avoid evil, wisdom to make the right friends, wisdom to serve the Lord, wisdom to raise their own children. By the way, a couple of other things I put under there. Praise God for a Bible-centered home. And uh, I praise God for your parents having a Bible-centered home. The, the Bible is the focus of your home. 
And that, that's very, very, very important. Very, very, very important. But not only the Bible being in the center of your home, but, but I, I thought about this, faithful to church. You know, I, I led my children to be faithful to church. Now, hear me out. There is no perfect church. Chesapeake Baptist is certainly not a perfect church. Far from it. The biggest problem in our church is the pastor. There's no doubt about it. I had no doubt about that. And uh, the biggest problem in my home is myself. There's no doubt. Uh, but church is God's institution. And I, I've tried to lead my children to the importance of not just having wisdom at home, but wisdom at, that they can get at church. Now, I led my children to start going to church faithfully on Sunday morning, uh, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You think about my children, they even today, they go to 8.30 service and 11 o'clock service. They're, they're getting a double dose. And so that's why they're sleeping in the second service here this, eve, this morning right there. They've heard the sermon already. And, uh, but no, I, I taught them that. You know, going to church, they get wisdom at, at, at home, but they also wisdom in the church, the importance of that. The, uh, the other day, we were going over the 2022 church calendar. Christmas in 2022 is on Sunday. And so we were discussing that, and I said, why don't we do a combined service where we take the 8.30 and the 11 o'clock service, we have church at 10 o'clock, that would be awesome on Christmas. And then Brother Mike uh, started talking about canceling the Sunday night service. Well, I said that, not you. One of my sons looked at me like, I like the, like, what did dad, no. And like gave me, how could I do such a horrible, wicked, rotten, vile thing of canceling? It's not, but, but just the thought of it. And you know what, I was thankful for that because he's so used to going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and, and I'm thankful for that. I'm very thankful for that part of his life. He's been around a place where the Bible has been preached. Now, look at chapter two, verse 52. We're almost done. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. It's okay. We're, we're, we are close to being done. Dad, we're almost done. I can hear my dad. He's yelling at me right now. He said, that's what you said 15 minutes ago. And, uh, verse 52 says this. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Then it says this. And in favor with God and man. Um, John the Baptist, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, had favor. Favor means kind, regard, kindness, a friendly disposition. It's, it's really interesting. This book of Samuel, it talks about Samuel. He grew, it says it like this, he grew before the Lord, and then it says, and was in favor with both the Lord and also with men. Favor is living under the blessings of God. Living under the blessings of God. When you raise your children to be strong children, strong physically, strong in spirit, not governed by their emotion, they have wisdom, the end result is favor with God. Not, it's, it's like living under the umbrella of God's blessing. Boy, is there anything better for a child? Well, I want my child to be rich. Well, there's a lot of rich people who are miserable. A lot of miserable. Not money makes you rich, but there are a lot of people. But, but nobody is, is miserable who's living under the favor of God. Boy, when you're under the blessing of God, the, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Favor with God, favor with God, favor with God. You know, John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, Abraham, the friend of God, uh, David, a man after God's own heart. You know, I, I look at me, I, I know I'm an imperfect sinner. I know that. I, I know I've got, I'm, I'm not perfect at all, but I, you know what I like my life? I, I'm 46 years of age. I got a great marriage. I got, I got an amazing wife. I, I, I really, I'm happy. I'm happy. I don't want another wife. Amen? I like my wife. I love my children. I don't want anybody else's children. Praise God. I don't want them. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I love, I love pastoring this church. I feel like I live under the blessings of God. I feel like God is blessing me and blessing me. And, bless, and I'm not bragging on that to look, give me glory. I'm just saying... When you follow God's instruction book, boy, the, the, the bless, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And it talks about God's blessing. I feel like I'm living under the blessing of God, 
It's good. It's good. But I desperately want that for my children. And do you, do you remember Hosea? Remember that? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And so people, parents reject the Bible and then it's like God forgets their children. In other words, it leads their children not to have favor with God. The point is, is what you do and what you do now, you can lead uh, your children to have favor with God. I talked to a pastor the other day, going through a trial. And uh, yeah, trial, but he's happy, Paul. He's like joyous. He's uh, in the work of the Lord and filled with joy. He's got a great wife, got great children. He, it's not just, it doesn't matter the trial. He's got the Lord blessing him despite the trials. He's got the joy of the Lord and he's got favor with God. And just looking at it, it's woo, Amen. glory. Amen. That's what I want for my children though. And that's, that's the, the message in Luke chapter one, Luke chapter two, is you can lead your children or your grandchildren, or you can lead yourself back into that favor with God. Uh, it's interesting. The last part is not just favor with God, but favor with man. And uh, it's obvious that John the Baptist had favor. Remember John the Baptist? He'd be that voice in the wilderness. He'd get out there and uh, around the Jordan River, he'd begin to preach. Do you realize that all these people flocked from all over to hear John the Baptist preach and usher in the Lord Jesus Christ? Hey, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Do you, do you realize he had favor with man? He was able, when I say favor with man, people followed him as he pointed them to Christ. That, that's powerful. Amen. It's powerful. He had favor with man. And uh, part of the blessings of God is you have favor with man. Here, here's to sum that up. Uh, Brother Mike and Miss Candace, that, that Christmas play, I laughed. I cried. I emotionally was, woo, man, on fire, excited. And you know, Brother Mike and Miss Candace put that all together. An amazing job with the choir, the, the play. Brother, Brother uh, Sinerico, you worked hard with that orchestra. And I just saw it back and I said, wow, man, God, you have favor with man. You had all these people come, you influenced them with good godly music. It was a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, Sunday night. And also it was a powerful uh, Friday night. Brother Chris, you and your wife, I saw you up there. You got the little ax with the, the glasses like that. And you know, you, you and your wife acting, giving the gospel act right there, and you, you, you were used powerfully, 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 Miss Sue, you too, used powerfully of the Lord. And I was thinking, uh, God gave you favor. God's blessing is upon you because you're living for the Lord. Then you're influencing and having favor with other people. You're, you're leading them to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing better this side of eternity. I want my children to have favor with man. In other words, God using them to point other people to the work of the Lord. We're pretty much done. I always say that. Raising strong children. There, there is some hindrances to raising strong children. We live in a society that's so, so difficult sometimes. And... Um, Back in the day, the society had a mom and a dad where the kids would work alongside with dad and the girls, you know, often work with mom and they spend a lot of time together. Dad would be out there and they'd be uh, trying to till the field and the son would be falling asleep and the, they would be tilling the wrong direction and the dad would say, hey, son, wake up. And the son would look, wake up and get back on the right track. Sorry, dad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they'd be planting seed. And the dad would say, son, uh, it's three seeds in each spot. It's not four. You're wasting valuable seeds. Oh, okay, Dad. And the dad would spend a lot of time training and teaching and spending time. Today's society is just different. You, most of the problem is, in reality, we'd like to raise our children to be strong in, in, strong in spirit, strong in stature. We'd like to give them wisdom. But in reality, a, a lot of our societies, the parents just aren't there. Well, you know, you've sometimes got single moms and single dads, we understand that, but just not there. They're not there. Now, we can just give up. We can throw in hands. I'd like to, but I can't. But then your children are affected the rest of the lives. So I want to just say somehow, don't say I can't. Somehow make time for your children. Make time to guide them. Make time to, to tell them what to do. 
That verse, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, I will so forget thy children. Well, I'd encourage you in this, you know, think about the children that God's given you, maybe grandchildren, you can help in that, but lead them to be strong physically. Lead them also to be strong in spirit, emotionally, not controlled by their emotions. Lead them to be in favor with God. Lead them to have wisdom. Lead them to be in favor with man. And then maybe you, maybe you can look at yourself and say, well, I, haven't, I don't have favor with God. I don't have wisdom. I'm not strong in spirit. I, I'm really controlled by my emotions. You don't have to live the rest of your, your life like that. Well, you can go to God and say, God, forgive me. Help me to come and be a little child again and grow in those areas. And you can be in favor with God and man. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. It's a great truth. You've given it to us right here in Luke chapter 1 and 2. And you desire us to be strong. Strong physically, strong in spirit, Lord. And it's funny. Sometimes we think of somebody who's handicapped. Sister Susan who's blind. She's not weak. She is strong. And uh, though she may be physically have some handicaps she doesn't let that hinder her relationship with you she's actually stronger than most people and Lord I pray that you help us to realize the influence we can have on our children and Lord I pray that you help somebody maybe here today who's never trusted you as their savior realize their only hope for heaven is you please bless this invitation in Jesus name amen stand with me if you will